right now. It's official. Districts 1 and 7 have new city council representatives tonight. District 1 incumbent Mario Bravo lost his seat to challenger Sukor. And District 7's Marina Aldrete Gavito is walking away with a win in the district her father previously served. Let's take a look right now at the results. You see Sukor with 59% of the vote to Mario Bravo's 41. And over in District 7 with 100% of the Polls reporting there, you see uh, Gavito walking away with this one at 62% of the vote. The night team's Lee Waldman is live at Soup Corps' watch party tonight. Lee, a lot of excitement pretty early at that camp tonight. Sukor had a very substantial lead as those early voting numbers came through. And less than an hour after those polls closed, Bravo called in order to concede. Now, Core and Alberto Gavito say they're both eager to get the work started in their districts. I want people to know that the person they elected is who they're going to get. I was so proud to earn the trust and support of over 7,000 voters last time. And so we just needed to pull them back out again. Now that the runoff election is done, the real work begins for District 1 and District 7 Councilwomen Sukkor and Marina Alderetti Gavito. There are so many places in, in District 1 right now where it's a mess. And I've heard that loudly and clearly. So one of my first hires is going to be solely directed just to addressing infrastructure. We're going to be focusing on accountability and transparency. We really want a city government that works for them, for the residents. We want to know the status of projects going on in our community. We want infrastructure updates on our streets and drainage. For course, she says she'll work on forming strong relationships with other districts to get projects completed. I will first and foremost do that. I will also make sure I'm building trust. Alderiti Gavito is following in her father's footsteps, taking over District 7. My parents instilled in us the importance of community service. Bravo sent over a statement about tonight's loss to Cor. It reads in part, quote, I called Councilwoman elect Dr. Sukor to offer my congratulations and let her know that I stand ready to assist her in this transition and any way she may call on me going forward, unquote. Live downtown, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Lee. New on the night beat, gunshots ring out at the strip mall on the city's northwest side, and that gunman is still on the loose. San Antonio police say two men got into an argument this afternoon at the Exchange Plaza Shopping Center on Northwest Loop 410. That's near Wurzbach Road. Witnesses told police shots were fired and the suspect took off in a black and white motorcycle. The victim was found with multiple gunshot wounds to the chest and in the leg. He was taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Police still looking for that suspect. SAPD homicide detectives investigating the murder of a man from an overnight party. They say the 41-year-old was killed just before 1230 in the 7100 block of Shady Grove Drive off of Military Drive. Police say the victim and the 23-year-old suspect were involved in some type of altercation in front of a home when the suspect grabbed a gun and shot the victim multiple times. Detectives arrived and say the suspect was detained and a gun was recovered. The identity of the victim has not yet been released. Homicide detectives now turning to you for help in another murder that happened Wednesday on West Laurel Street. And police are releasing video of the crime. Take a look at your screen. You can see the victim, 35-year-old Eloy Hernandez, in a red shirt, arguing with another man in the middle of the street. Police say that other person was armed with a small handgun and shot Hernandez once. He was taken to University Hospital where he later died. Anyone who knows the suspect or has any information at all, urged to call Crime Stoppers, the number's on your screen, 210-224-STOP or 7867. You do not have to give your name when you call. San Antonio fire investigators are looking into the cause of this house fire over on the southwest side. They say the fire broke out here last night, a little before midnight in the 6300 block of Big Valley Drive near Ray Ellison Drive. When firefighters arrived there, they say the flames had spread to the attic. It took them about 45 minutes to finally put the fire out. No injuries were reported. Well, a San Antonio mother has one wish, to be reunited with her baby. A unique local recovery home is bringing her, close, bringing her closer to her son while she recovers from both addiction and domestic violence. The night team's Camelia Juarez tells us how a new expansion to the recovery home is offering more women like her and children a brighter future. When he comes, I lay out this blanket and I have a whole bag full of diapers and stuff. Lorna Wise's first and only son was conceived during an abusive relationship. 
That's how CPS became involved. Now she can only see her son Isaiah for one hour once a week. We need to bond. I, I want him to know that I love him and I would do anything for him. Yeah, I have like a little shrine to my baby. Since Isaiah was born, Wise has been at Casa Mia, safe from her abuser, sober, working for Haven for Hope, and saving up for her own car. The only thing missing is her miracle baby. I, I want my son to say that I'm his hero. So that's how I lead my life, is such that he would, you know, be proud of me. Casa Mia is one of the nation's few substance use recovery homes that allows mothers to recover with their babies by their side. UT Health San Antonio is helping Casa Mia add a new women's wellness campus nearby. That will include an on-site clinic, fully staffed nursery, and child care center. This place was a godsend. Yes, look at this. Because he's a Cowboys fan, okay? So look, it's a little Cowboys jersey, which in itself is cute, right? But he's the player. It's his name. Isaiah's crib, clothes, and diapers are all waiting for him next to her bed. She hopes her new environment and new support system will satisfy the judge. Yes, I'm ready. I've, I've been ready. The new campus is set to open in early 2024. Camalia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. All right, take a look at this. If you haven't seen it yet, this was the site one couple saw on Quintana Beach. It was Friday morning when they took this video after a fish kill had wiped out thousands of Gulf Menhaden in the surrounding waters. Daryl Shope shared the video on Facebook and said the fish were washed up for miles along the shoreline. The Texas Parks and Wildlife officials say fish kills happen when the oxygen levels in the water runs low after a temperature change. Before this type of event happens, fish can usually be seen gulping for water near the surface. Parks and Wildlife officials say if you see or suspect a fish kill that you should contact them immediately. What well, colors of every shade lit the Riverwalk this evening in celebration of Pride Month. It was the second annual Visit San Antonio Bud Light Pride River Parade. 19 colorful river barges floated down the river, each with the unique theme of a pride icon like Elton John and Lady Gaga. The purpose is to promote the city's inclusion and support the LGBTQ community living openly with equal rights. There was a lot of sunshine in that video. It was very <laughs> hot out there earlier today, this afternoon, and even this evening. Because of that, we saw temperatures actually climb into the mid 90s here in San Antonio. So 96 was our official high earlier this afternoon. That actually makes it the 11th day so far this year that we've seen that thermometer climb to or above the 90 degree mark. And we will continue to see that number rise, not just into the back half of the weekend tomorrow, but also into next week. A warming trend really takes over and will continue as well. Right now, still plenty warm out there. We're still in the 80s for a good portion of the area. Tomorrow, we're going to start off in the mid 70s here in San Antonio. I think a few clouds will be possible first thing in the morning, but then more sunshine takes back over. Highs are headed for the upper 90s and closing in on that triple digit mark, feeling even hotter because of the humidity. And yes, a stretch of triple digit days is in the forecast next week. We'll get to those details coming up in just a few. Coming up later on the night beat, renters being scammed. It is a scheme families everywhere are seeing more and more of. Marilyn Moritz sits down with a local victim and tells us how we can avoid the same mistake. Plus, an employee at a Westside Mexican restaurant was surprised to see me this week, but she was even more surprised to find out the low health score they got. The health violations inspectors found. And Donald Trump indicted while on the campaign trail. What he's telling his supporters about his latest legal trouble. Donald Trump traveling to Georgia and North Carolina this afternoon, his first public appearances since his federal indictment. The 37 count indictment unsealed yesterday outlines every charge the former president is now facing. It also includes photographs of boxes stored at Trump's Mar-a-Lago home stacked in places like a bathroom and a ballroom stage. ABC's Phil Lipoff has the latest on the investigation and what the former president is saying about it. Former President Trump campaigning for the first time since the 37 count indictment against him was unsealed, speaking to supporters at a rally in Georgia, calling it a travesty of justice. It's a horrible thing for this country. I mean, the only good thing 
about it is it's driven my poll numbers way up. Trump then traveling to Greensboro for the North Carolina GOP state convention, maintaining his innocence. Small dollar fundraising is setting records, but still, you get indicted over nothing. Special counsel Jack Smith is encouraging everyone to read the entire document that lays out the charges against the former president. Our laws that protect national defense information are critical to the safety and security of the United States, and they must be enforced. Violations of those laws put our country at risk. Stacks of boxes allegedly filled with sensitive documents that the indictment says Trump was not authorized to possess were found in a Mar-a-Lago ballroom, a bedroom, even a bathroom. Trump is accused of showing some of these documents to unauthorized people at least twice. Once in July 2021, Trump allegedly showed a writer a plan of attack drawn up by the Pentagon. As president, I could have declassified it, Trump is quoted saying. Now I can't. Trump also allegedly showed someone affiliated with his political action committee a map related to a military operation. Trump is accused in the indictment of directing his valet, Walt Nada, also charged in this case, to move classified documents. Nada joined Trump on the campaign trail today, serving as his body man. He has not commented on the charges against him. But not included in the indictment? A motive. All they have to do is prove that the crime was committed beyond a reasonable doubt, and motive does not have to be proven. The Secret Service, the U.S. Marshals, and Miami police are already working on security plans for Tuesday when Trump is due to appear in Miami federal court. Allison Kosick, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, our days of avoiding summer have ended. It was nice while it lasted. Texas didn't try to kill us in May this year. It didn't. I feel like I would say it evened out, but we're always like in bad moods when it gets this hot. Yep. So we, we definitely tried our best to delay the onset of the triple digit days. Did you hear Tim being positive about the weather? Last Finding couple. a silver lining? I love it. I Who awesome. are you? I don't know. <laughs> Must be the heat. It must be the heat, yes. So that's going to be the theme as we head into the second half of the weekend and even more so into next week. Temperatures climbing, already approaching the triple digits tomorrow afternoon. And yes, the potential for a stretch of triple digit days is in the forecast, especially as we head into the middle to later portions of next week. And really, this afternoon, it was hot and humid out there as well. 96 was the high, but of course, when you factored in the moisture, it felt like the triple digits across a good portion of the area right now 88 degrees but check out your feels like temperature at this 10 p.m. hour still in the low 90s so yes that summer like feel is definitely here and it's going to crank up even more so over the next several days so look at those dew points how we measure the moisture and the lower levels of the atmosphere still very much elevated here tonight in the upper 60s and 70s out there so it is noticeable and in some spots a little oppressive as well, and that's going to be the theme. It's not going anywhere throughout the second half of the weekend, even more so into next week. We're still expecting those numbers to sit in the upper 60s and low 70s, helping those feels like temperatures climb even hotter than what the actual air temperatures are expected to be. So here's the setup. We've got high pressure in control right now for the most part. It's really anchored off to our southwest, but watch what happens as we head into our Monday. That's going to shift farther up to the northeast and really start to control our weather pattern moves closer to south central Texas and that continues throughout a good portion of next week as well. So because of that, temperatures are going to be on the rise even more so. We've got a forecast high of 99 here in San Antonio as early as tomorrow afternoon into Monday as well, approaching that triple digit mark into Tuesday and then you can see even into Wednesday the second half of next week. A lot of pink on this bar graph. We are expecting low triple digits 103 possible as we head into next weekend and then factoring in that humidity. Look at the heat index values between 102 to 107 for the majority of next week, but then into Friday and Saturday, maybe even closing in on 110. So it is going to be a stretch of days to practice heat safety, stay hydrated, wear 
sunscreen, especially if you are planning on being outside for extended periods of time. All right, so here's a look at your Sunday. We're going to start off in the muggy mid 70s here in San Antonio, around 75 officially here in town, 73 in Canyon Lake, 73 in Hondo, 71 up in Bandera. I do think because the moisture is in place right now, some morning cloud cover will be possible. But then as we head into the lunchtime hour, more sunshine returns, temperatures already pushing that 90 degree mark. And then into the afternoon with even more sunshine, that forecast high sits around 99 here in San Antonio. And yes, some triple digits certainly will be possible, especially the farther south and west that you go. So the big theme over the next several days, just prepare for the heat because we are in it for the long haul with those temperatures climbing even more so into next week. Of course, the humidity making it feel even hotter than it already is. And we'll end it with this on a positive note. Okay. Another beautiful sunset. Where is it? Woodlawn Lake. Yes. Always. Most beautiful spot in San Antonio. Just <laughs> stunning. On Saturday nights. We'll see a picture there. Exactly. Always wonderful. I love it too. I was going to ask him how positive he could possibly be about the forecast, and then he did that. So well, That's a pretty picture. Had to end it on a good note. <laughs> Probably felt pretty hot whoever took it. <laughs> All right, uh, the presumptive number one NBA draft pick, proving he is human by having yes. a yes. bad game. Yeah, he's probably trying to stay positive tonight. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about Victor Wimbanyaba. Had a bad game today, but the reviews were even worse. And the Longhorns, a rare ninth-inning comeback in the college playoffs. Coming up. Oops. He seemed like he disappeared a lot in, uh, in, in, in the plays and then the plays he did make. It's almost like, gosh, I hate this. Like he forgot he was on the court. Well, so everybody's a critic. Actually, that is Yahoo Sports NBA draft analyst. Kristen Peake, so she may know a little something what she's talking about, what she saw today. She didn't obviously see much from Victor Wimbanyama and his game one performance today against Monaco. So he didn't play his best game ever. He is still in the LNB Pro A Finals with the Metropolitans 92 against Monaco in France, but not for long if he doesn't pick it up. He started with a great block. He was three of eight, finished with eight points, seven rebounds, two blocks, two assists in 26 minutes. His 92s lost big, 87-64. They are down 0-1 in the best of five. Here is Peak with a suggestion, so Wimbenyama might have a better game too. They need to find a way to use him more offensively sooner, I think, in the shot clock instead of waiting, pass it to the wing, have yeah. him cut the lane, and have him do something in the middle. They need to get him more involved and more touches earlier on. So we'll see if his team takes that advice. Game two of the best of five, Monday, 1.30 San Antonio time. By the way, Peek told us her source says that Spurs head coach Peck Bobovich is in, not in France watching the series. He stayed away so he didn't distract Wimbenyama. And by the way, he's not a spur just yet. Hey, college baseball, game one tonight, Texas Stanford. The Stanford Super Regional pick it up in the top of the ninth inning. Stanford's up 5-2, Texas down to three outs. They got bases loaded with nobody out. Mitchell Daly, deep right field, two outfielders. Oh, you hate, oh, ooh, ow, you hate when that bad communication happens. Off the fielder's glove, two runs come home. It's 5-4, UT tied the game. And then Reagan alum, Porter Brown, singles to right. Two more runs come in. Texas wins it, 7-5, game two tomorrow. The Horns' first ninth inning comeback since 2009. TCU, Indiana State, Horn Frogs already have a win from yesterday, fourth inning. Huge for TCU. They were down two runs, tied it at two. Clark High School alum, freshman Anthony Silva hits a single into right center. Runner comes in from second. TCU has the lead. They hang on to win it 6-4. They are headed to Omaha. It is game day for San Antonio FC hosting the El Paso Locomotive, a team that has won seven straight matches. Third minute of the match, Jorge Hernandez, who was our guest at 5 p.m. to preview the game with the corner kick, and Mitchell Tainter scores off the header to make it 1-0 SAFC. This game was tied at halftime, 60th minute now. Sam Adiran, one-on-one -on -one with the goalie, breaks the tie with a goal. And the final from Toyota Field. Well, their winning streak is over, but they end up with a tie in San Antonio and Locomotive tie 2-2. Game four of the Stanley Cup tonight. Vegas up 2-1 in the series. Vegas didn't waste any time getting one into the net. First five minutes of the first period. Chandler Stevenson makes it a 1-0. And that was the score after the first, second period. 
Vegas starts to light the lamp again. Stevenson scores again for his second goal of the game. And then less than four minutes later, it's William Carlson to make it 3 nothing Golden Knights. They hold on to win 3-2 game five Tuesday night back in Vegas. If Vegas wins, it'll be their first Stanley Cup in team history. And basketball, not the only sport playing finals. The world number one women's tennis player, Poland's Iga Swiatek, won her third French Open today. Three sets, 6-2, 5-7, 6-4, and a final match that lasted nearly three hours. She won the French Open three of the last four years. She also won the U.S. Open back in 2022. Tomorrow will be the men's final between Norway's Kasper Rudd and the Joker, Novak Djokovic. That's pretty good. You don't have to like King James, but you got to respect the moment right there. LeBron was the honorary starter for the 24 hours of Le Mans in France today. The race turns 100 years old this weekend. Tom Brady also on hand. That's a cool moment right there for such a historic moment for that race. Not and bad for a kid from Akron, Ohio, that, David hey, Sears. That's pretty good. Could you have done as well? Pretty good. No, I definitely no. couldn't. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, David. Still ahead, he terrorized the country for more than a decade until he was finally identified and arrested. The Unabomber is now dead. What authorities are saying about his death. You guys went from an 89 at the beginning of the year down to a 71. I'm just kind of wondering what, what happened on this inspection. One second. And I try to get some answers at this Asian buffet that saw its score drop 18 points in just four months. The violations that earn them a barely passing score right after the break. Well, an inspector found a smorgasbord of health code violations at a South Side Asian buffet. They were hit with 20 violations, including a dead rodent and roaches. I tried to get yeah. some answers about their nearly failing score this week, but the manager disappeared behind the kitchen door. Ken's Cafe, located in the 7800 block of IH35 South, saw their score drop 18 points in just four months going from an 89 in January all the way down to a barely passing 71 in May. The sushi on the buffet line was too warm. Fly traps with pests stuck to them were found right above the food prep area. There was a dead rodent and roaches stuck to a glue trap in the pantry. Raw chicken was being stored next to cooked chicken. They had numerous plumbing problems that needed to be fixed. Employees weren't wearing hair restraints and the kitchen needed a deep cleaning. The employee bathroom also needed to be cleaned and sanitized. The manager said it wasn't being used, but the inspector wrote it had a foul stench and evidence it was being used. Hello. I had plenty of questions for the business. I just wanted to follow up because it's been about a month to see if you guys had the reinspection and to see if you corrected some of the problems like the roaches and rodents and the flies. This worker said she'd be right back. I waited while other workers recorded us, but the woman never returned. Coming back? No? Okay. Probably not. All right. Before leaving, I noticed the business was displaying the wrong score. A reinspection was ordered. <laughs> Mi Mexico restaurant in the 3100 block of South Star Zamora got a 73. Chicken and fajitas cooked the day before were improperly cooled. Other foods in cold hold units were too warm. A worker was preparing food without gloves. Tortillas were being stored in grocery style to go bags. And the floors were in need of a deep cleaning. A curious worker came out to see why we were there. We had a long inspection score? Yeah, 73. Okay. So. Did okay. you guys, do you know if you made the corrections? I believe so. We always work on it. Yes, sir. The business was scheduled for a reinspection. <laughs> Calabra Meat Market, located in the 4600 block of South Flores, got an 81. They needed to thoroughly clean the inside of the ice machine as well as display windows and sliding doors. They were using Foca laundry detergent to clean dishes and utensils. Drain pipes were spraying and leaking water. Ceiling tiles above the bakery and meat market were peeling and had exposed insulation that needed to be fixed. A reinspection was ordered. For BKD, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Across America tonight, Ted Kaczynski, the Harvard-educated mathematician, also known as the Unabomber, has died. 
He was responsible for killing three people and maiming 23 more in a bombing spree that lasted longer than 15 years. He was serving eight life sentences after pleading guilty to mailing bombs all over the country from 1978 to 1995. He was captured at a remote cabin in the mountains of Montana in 1996 after his brother suggested to FBI investigators that he may be the Unabomber. Gazinski was found unresponsive this morning in his cell in a North Carolina prison and was pronounced dead at a nearby hospital. Well, the National Archives are pushing back on new claims from former President Trump and his legal team surrounding his retention of classified documents. Trump's team says presidents have two years to sort through records after leaving office, but the archive says that is not the case. They dispute that the law requires all records created by the presidents be turned over to them at the end of their term. Trump is facing a 37-count federal indictment over his handling of presidential documents found in his Florida home. Meanwhile, in Washington, D.C., the current administration has still not commented on those new indictments Trump is now facing. A White House aide said President Biden learned about the indictment from reports but declined to comment if the president had anything to say about the situation. This comes a day after Biden told several reporters in person no comment when asked about the charges on Friday. Trump is now due to appear inside a Miami federal court coming up later this week on Tuesday. Well, they never thought it would happen to them. A local family got scammed when they tried to rent a house. Yeah, it's a scheme that's happening more and more as people look for affordable rent. Now, this victim tells 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz, the house seemed so right until everything went so wrong. Uh, Time's up on Vicki King's lease. But her family has no place to go. Everything's going to have to go into storage since we don't have a house to go to. They had found a house on Craigslist. This house, $1,350 a month for rent. It had a, a nicely cared for lawn. It was affordable in our price range. Do you think the price was too good? Yes. They called and headed out to tour it. The guy said, call me when you get there. So we did and he talked us through opening it. They downloaded an app to get inside for a self-tour while the alleged owner was on the phone. And you just say, I want to take a tour now. Yes, unlock the door, and it click. It all seemed perfect. The Kings used Zelle to pay more than $1,500 for a background check, security deposit, and pet fees. They signed a lease and started moving in. And then all of a sudden this car pulled up and there was a lady in there and she said she had an appointment with her realtor to see the house. That's when Vicki called the number listed on the yard sign, open door. I said, who owns this house? And they said, we do. I said, you do. I gave the names of the people and I said, do they own it? He goes, no. It says, you've been rental scammed. My heart just sunk. We contacted Open Door in California. They tell us rental fraud is a growing trend and not just with them. Take a look. They even have signs plastered on the front door that say this home is for sale, not for rent. To be safe, they say Google the address to see if the home is listed elsewhere. Verify the true owner through public records and beware prices that are just too good. As for Vicki, she's filed a police report on a fake listing that cost real money. I'm hoping he'll make a mistake and they can get him because it's not right to do that to people. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Coming up on the night beat, losing money over a message. Americans have lost millions of dollars over phony text messages. We'll tell you how to spot the threat before you become the next victim.